Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create your first flow using Power Automate Desktop. My name is Brad Dara and in this tutorial I will show you the simple and easy steps to be able to create a flow in Power Automate that will perform a Google search using Microsoft Edge browser. Let's get started. So let's start Power Automate. After the installation process is completed, you should see an icon on your desktop that looks similar to this one here, Power Automate. If you don't, you can also start Power Automate by going down to the search bar and typing in Power Automate. Click on it, and it should start. So your first time through, you should see a screen that's similar to this. It's indicating that you have no flows currently, but if you want to create a new flow, you can either click on this button here or on the top left hand corner you'll always see a button that says plus new flow okay so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button here and we're going to create a new flow the first thing it's going to ask you for is a flow name this is the name that kind of uh, is a summary for what your flow is going to do so we're just going to call it flow one for right now don't worry whatever you name it you can always rename it afterwards so we'll click create all right now, initially, when you create a new flow, your screen will look similar to this. I'm going to call attention to the left side here. On the left pane, you have something what you call the actions. These are all the actions that your flow will execute. And there, are, there are a large number of actions that you can choose from, and they're all grouped uh, accordingly. The center part is sort of like this is where you would create your flow or the actions for your flow. It's called the canvas. And initially there's nothing there because it's it's you starting for the very first time. So this this will be blank. And on the right hand side you'll see variables. As you start to create your flow, you'll start to accumulate variables and you'll also start to create what they call UI elements. UI elements are a way of being ident being able to identify uh, elements within a web page or even within a uh, web-based application. And I'll show you that in a few seconds here when we start to record our script. Power Automate is a uh, drag and drop kind of an application. Low code, no code. You don't really have to do a lot of coding to be able to create your flow. So if all we wanted to do in this exercise is just to be able to open up a browser, do a simple search, okay? well. Before we begin, we have to be able to launch a browser. Now, there's a couple of ways to be able to, f to find the action that will launch the browser. The first way is on the actions here, you can see that there's a, there's a, um, uh, a section called browser automation. Now, if I click on the, the drop down here, I can expand it and it shows me all of the actions that are associated with browsers. And you can see that you have a number of uh, ways to be able to launch a browser. You can launch Microsoft Edge, you can launch Chrome, you can launch Firefox, and you can even launch the deprecated Internet Explorer. But for this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Edge. So to open up Edge, or to, to, to call the action to open up Edge, it's a click and drag. So you highlight it, click it, and then you drag it onto your canvas. So this will be our first action. By default, the launch mode is going to be launch new instance, and that's what we want to do. We want to launch a new instance of the browser. And then the second piece of information that's asking for, or property, is the initial URL. So what we're going to do is we want to go to Google. So we type in google.com. The window state by default is normal, or you can select it to be either a minimize or a maximize. For this ex uh, exercise, I'm just going to leave it as normal. Okay and then click the Save button. So, so far all we have is a flow that simply just opens up a Microsoft Edge browser and then immediately goes to google.com. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so did what it wanted, it did what we wanted it to do, which is open up a browser and it immediately goes to google.com. Well, now what we want to do is we want to type in a search term and then we want to actually hit the Google search button to be able to have a set of results that come back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to close or I'm going to leave this window open. I'm going to go back to Power Automate. Now, 
in the browser automation section, there's a lot of other options that we can, we can select or actions that we can select. What we wanna do is we wanna populate the text field. The text field we wanna populate is the center one here. And then what we wanna do is we wanna hit this button, which is invoke the search. So back to Power Automate. Underneath browser automation, there's a section that says web form filling. If I click on the drop down for that, there's some additional actions that I can choose from. But what we want to do is we want to populate a text field. And this is the action that we want to select. Now it kind of gets chopped off here. So you really can't see exactly what this action is saying. When you hover over it, it gives you a pop-up that comes up that gives you some description. However, you can also click and drag to widen up the field. So we want to populate a text field. So I'm going to click and drag that underneath the action that I just created. And now what it's going to ask me, or it's going to ask me for some parameters. The first one is the web browser instance. It's automatically filled in the browser that I just opened. Now, what's happened is that on our first action, when I open up the browser, it's created a variable. And you can see that the variable is right here. It's called browser. Variables in Power Automate are identified as having percent signs surrounding them. So it's automatically going to say, well, you've already created an instance of your browser, and this is what I'm going to refer to. The second piece of information that it's going to ask for is what is the UI element that you want to populate? Well, this is where you would specify it. If you click on the drop down list, right now we don't have any UI elements specified. So we want to add a UI element. So we click on the add UI element. Our automate will close. And now what we're going to have is a window that comes up. It's called the UI element picker. And this is a way for us to tell Power Automate what is the field that we want to populate. So if I move my mouse over to the web browser, you can see it's going to put a red box around elements within the page. Okay, but the one we're interested in here is the text area element. This is where we want to be able to type in our search term. Now to record this UI element, what we have to do is we have to move our mouse over the element that we want to capture. And then it says to capture it, hold down the control key on your keyboard and then hit the left mouse button. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to hover over it, wait till it becomes a red box, hold down control and left click. It says wait for action. And now what it's done is it said, okay, now I, I know what field that you want to deal with now. Now what you got to do is you have to say, well, what do you want to type in as for your search term? So that's where the text comes in. This is the text box we can type in. So what I'm going to search for is Power Automate Desktop. And now we're done. Okay, now every now and then, this is a good practice, is that when you make modifications or you add or remove actions on any of your flows, every now and then it's a good idea to click the save button. Okay, so now let's, what we're gonna do is now that it's, I've recorded this much so far, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the browser that I have. And now I just wanna run it to see if it's able to populate that text field. So click the run button up here and let's see what happens. So it opens up the browser, it goes to google.com, and now it should type into the search field, Power Automate Desktop. Okay, so far so good. A couple more things we need to do now. Now what we have to do is we have to tell Power Automate is to, what to do is to hit this search button, this Google search button. So we'll go back to Power Automate. And under web form filling, under the browser automation section, press button on a web page. That's the one we want. Click and drag. Similar to what our exercise was before, where we have to tell it, well, we know it knows that you're gonna you're dealing with the browser that we've already created, but now we have to pick another UI element. Okay, so we're gonna hit the drop down and we're gonna say add UI element. Okay, the UI element that we're interested in is this Google search button right here. Wait for it to have a outline of a red box, hold down the control key, left click. Okay, and now my third action is to click that search button. Let's close the browser, try again and see where we're at. Now 
Now it's going to do the step number or action number two, which is type in the search term. And now it should click on the Google search button and we have results that come back. So far, so good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fourth action. What I want to do is after it's completed that step is I want it to close the browser. Okay. So how do we do that? We move our list down here at the very bottom. You'll see an action that says close web browser. This is going to close the browser that I that I'm, that's currently open. Click and drag, put it right underneath step number three. So this will be our fourth step. Again, it's going to say, well, what is the instance that you want to close? Well, we're using the browser variable that has been already been created for us, and then we click save. Save our work, and let's run. Now, what should happen is essentially opens up the web browser types in a search term, clicks the button that does invokes the search, and then it should close the browser. And there we go, it's completed. Okay. All right, so now I've mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, there was a section called variables. And on the variables, you can see that there is a variable, that, a flow variable that's being created for us, and that's the browser variable. In action number one, when we launched our new browser, if I double click on it, you can then go back and edit it, but I'm not gonna edit it, I just wanted to show you that at the very bottom here, it says variables produced. And what it's done is it's automatically created a variable named browser. That's the variable name that's referred to up here. So any of your flow variables that you created throughout your flows will all appear in this section here. In the top right hand corner, you can see that right now I'm showing the variables view, but there's another view that's available to us and that's for the UI elements. Remember that we captured UI elements when we were recording our flow. So how do you look at those UI elements? Well, if you hover over this icon here, it says UI elements. If you click on it, you'll see that we've captured two UI elements. Okay, there's the, this was the search button. This was the search box, the text box. If you click on the UI element, there's a rendering of what the image looked like at the time, and you can expand it. So this was the search box on the Google page. So that's what that element is. And then the second one is the button. If I click on it, you can see that it's the Google search button. By default, Power Automate will give it names, variable names, called it text area search. What I wanna do is I wanna make it a little bit more meaningful. Before I do that, you can see that on the actions, on the, the second action where it was typing in the Power Automate desktop search term, you can see populate text field text area search. Notice what happens when I rename this variable. If I right click on this variable, I have an option to rename it. And I click on rename, it's gonna highlight it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this input search bar. When I hit enter, it saves the rename. I, I've renamed this element now, but you'll notice that on the action, it's also renamed it as well. And for the second one, because it's a button, what I like to do is I like to rename this to be a little bit more meaningful. So I'm going to rename this to button Google search. Like that. And accordingly, for action number three, it's renamed it based upon what I've called it here. Okay. And now I'll hit save. Now what I wanna do is, after it's returned results, I wanna click on one of the links so that it brings up the results for that link, okay? So there's a debugging feature that you'll use when you start to edit or modify your flows. And what it'll do is it'll stop at any particular point within your flow so that you can perform some actions, you can insert some actions, or perhaps you wanna be able to um, check variable values and things like that. So what I wanna do is after it's performed in action number three here, after it's hit the Google search button, what I wanted to do is I wanted to pause before it closes the browser, and I'll show you why. Now, to put a breakpoint in any one of your actions, move your cursor to the left of the action number, this is the step number, 
and then click, left click, and it'll put a red dot there. So what happens now is when I click on the run button, it'll proceed to open up a launch, it'll, it'll proceed to open up a edge browser, enter in the search term, click the search button, and then it'll pause. See, now it's at, it's, it's sitting at the search results, but now the, the power automate flow is paused on step number four. And you can see at the very bottom, it says status paused. Now it's waiting. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to be able to capture this link at this stage here. So if I go back to power automate, now what I want to do is I don't want to continue with the, the execution of this flow. I can now hit the stop button and that allows me to go back into editor view. At this point, what I want to do is I want to click this link. So the action to click a link is right here. Click link on a web page. I'm going to click and drag this. Now, what I want to do is I want it to put it in between steps three and four. So I'll click and drag and insert it right there. So that's, that's where we want to be able to perform this action. Now, again, what we did before is we have to tell Power Automate, well, what is the link that you want to click on? So click on the drop down and I want to add the UI element. Okay, as before, move your cursor to the element that you want to capture and then wait for the red box to surround it and then hold down the control key and left click. And this is one that we want right here. And I'll do that. Okay, and now I save. And now let's put that action in here. I can go back to my UI elements and I can just right click and say rename this. And I want to call it just plain link. Okay. The variables. Now I'm going to leave the breakpoint as it is right now and let's run it or save it first. And then let's run this flow just to make sure that it does exactly what we wanted to do with that extra step. Right now it should find that link clicks on it and it takes us to the page and you'll notice again, the breakpoint is set so that it's going to stop on just short of executing that last action to close the web browser. So this is how you're able to execute your flows within the designer mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close off this flow. Now, if there's any unsaved changes, it'll come up with this panel that says, you have unsaved changes and do you want to save them or don't save them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the changes and you can see this is the flow that we've created flow one. And I said at the very beginning of this tutorial is that even though I've called it flow one, I can rename this flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it and you'll notice that there's three dots or extra options for this particular flow, more actions. If I select it and one of the actions I can select is rename. And what I'm going to call this is open Google and search for Power Automate. Something meaningful. Hit enter. And now I've renamed this flow to this name. Now, to execute this flow, I can go back into the editor view, which is the pencil. And if I click on the edit, it'll bring up the, in, into editor view for this, this flow and I can hit the run button. Okay. So again, I can hit the run button from here. However, what I can also do, I'm going to close it off, is that this in this view, in the, in the main menu of Power Automate, you'll see that there's an icon that looks like an arrow. And if you hover over it, it's the run button. If I click on run, I'm just going to bring this over here. A panel will appear and saying, this is the flow that you're running. It's got a duration with a timer. And it, now it's showing you is the action that it's executing within this particular flow. Put this over here. You can see now it's populating the text field. Waits for the results. Click on the link. Close the browser. And you can see that it completed successfully. It took 27 seconds. So it's just another way of being able to execute your flows, either in designer mode, or you can run it directly from the Power Automate main menu.
So that's the introduction to creating a, your first flow in Power Automate. With other tutorials, I'll go into more in-depth uh, descriptions of all of the actions and all of the other features that you can use for Power Automate.